Hello, I'm going to show you how to install the Vintage Air conditioning system for Camaros and Firebirds. And there you go. It is already installed. I started making the film after I'd already started working on the project, but I'm going to review some things and show you how to do it. There is another video or two <clears throat> of installing this thing on a Camaro. And I wanted to show you what it looks like in its glory, splendor, and majesty on a Trans Am. So there you go. This is what your finished project will look like. It took me about four weekends to do it. I think if you're motivated and prepared, you probably could do this in one weekend. Um, that's if you have all the right tools and you're not going to AutoZone a thousand times. But that's not me. And that's not most people, you end up going to AutoZone a thousand times. But at the end of the day, you will have a beautiful, functional air conditioner that looks stock, feels stock, and makes your wife happy when you're driving your black-on-black -black Trans Am in the summer with the T-tops out, because it blows enough cold air to keep her cool even with the tops out. So, let's get started. Before you get started, what I would recommend you do is take the fender off. Take both of them off, depending on if you want to do any other side projects when you're working on your car. When you jack up the, the car, <clears throat> these things are subframes. It is not a solid frame. So what you have to remember is <clears throat> if you jack up one side, you're going to twist the body. And if you twist the body, it's going to make getting this fender off a pain and it's going to make things not line up correctly when you put it back together so when you jack up the car <clears throat> remove your air dam if you have one uh, if you got a Trans Am but you see underneath my oil pan the cross member jack it up in the middle of that and then put jack stands on both sides so when the car is in the air, it is evenly up in the air. Um, and where you can put the jack stands, <clears throat> you can either put them in the middle on this cross member right there. So I'd put the jack right there, jack it up. And then on the sides of the car, put your jack stands on the frame rails. So it's a little dirty under here, but you can see this big hole. Um, I'll generally put it around on either side of this big hole. So a jack stand over here jack stand over on the other side I'm in the same place you'll start by taking off the wheel obviously you should know how to do that with you know, lug nuts uh, take off your your nuts here for the fender, fa uh, fender flare and then you see under here there are nuts for the fender inner inner and outer fender so you're gonna take these nuts off or these bolts and then inside here, there's a bolt you got to take off. There's a couple other ones underneath down here. Right here, you see this guy? Take that off. Got this one, and you may or may not have speed nuts and bolts here. You should inside here. So I would highly recommend you take the fender off. Uh, the guy who did it on a Camaro did not take the fender off, and what he ended up doing was using a sawzall to chop out his evaporator. Uh, I did not want to do that. And having the fender out makes it a lot easier to route your lines. It makes it a lot easier to do a lot of things. So take your hood off first. It's easy. Four bolts. Two on each side. Take off your hood. Take off your fender. Take out the inner fender. And get to work. Okay, so the 
box is off with the evaporator and the blower. It's right here. <clears throat> You'll see all of these bolt holes. So there, there, here, here. And then you have to take these off. These are a pain to get to. I got to them uh, from the top with a really long extension and then I had a swivel joint on it from the top on this one then from underneath on this one so with the wheel off the inner fender and the outer fender off you will save yourself tons of heartache please do that if you're gonna do this installation and once all the bolts are off take a screwdriver stick it in there get the blower started coming off Pry it off. There's a lot of goo. You can see a lot of goo goes around these bolts. I see all this goo here. Uh, just pry it off, and then to be honest with you, I just ripped it until it broke. So you can see some remnants of it there. You can see how it broke there. Uh, <clears throat> if you're doing this installation, you don't need it anymore. So just rip it off. That's actually how I ended up getting that bolt out at the very end. I didn't even take it out, I just broke the thing off and then took it out at the end. Okay, so while I was in there, I worked on my oil pressure sending unit. I had a T on there with an extension so I could also have a manual gauge that I had mounted up here. Um, <clears throat> don't need that anymore because now I know I have confidence that my digital one or my uh, factory one works so just got a little elbow in there you can see with the sending unit plug <clears throat> uh, I had a pretty bad oil leak you can see on my header there I'm gonna clean that you know, I've cleaned it several times get all that oil off there uh, but just ran the engine so now I know it doesn't leak anymore so now I'm gonna move to the inside now we're going to take out the seat, so we got room. And we're going to start taking this dash apart. Okay, before you can get back to the AC install, you got to remove the dashboard. And that's going to be the glove box, the console, the shifter knob, the power window switch, and the second glove box in the console, plus the radio. And I'll show you how to do that stuff. Now you're going to remove the glove box screws after you open the glove box, take the glove box out, then you're going to take out the other glove box in the console, empty that thing out, there's a couple screws at the bottom, uh, and you can pull it right out. Okay. <coughs> so I got the uh, glove box out, it's pretty easy. Uh, there's some trim screws that go here, and there are some that go up here. There. Uh, there's another one over here. Really, all you gotta do is take out the trim screws. Then the, the little arm on the glove box, you could take it off. <laughs> Sitting on my ratchet. Um, you could take these things off to pull out uh, the arm so the glove box comes down so you can get the rest of these screws that are right here. These trim screws that go by the vent. Um, <clears throat> those are hard to get to. Uh, I have a screwdriver that has a swivel on it, so it was easy for me to get to them. But if you can't, you can just pull out the glove box itself. Once you get those trim screws out, it's pretty easy because it's flexible. Um, then you can pull this thing out because this just catches on the side of the glove box right here. But uh, once you pull that out, you end up like this. <clears throat> reach back in here, push out the air conditioner vent, and then reach up underneath to take out your radio. Now I also took out my uh, console sitting over there on the other side of that motorcycle. <clears throat> but uh, the console is easy. You open up the box. Here's the box. Full of stuff, but there's two screws in the bottom of it. That's all it's holding it in. Uh, they screw in to these brackets. <clears throat> you pull out those screws, pull the box out, 
and then there's screws holding the console onto the uh, the frame, the floorboards of the car. I just use these two, so you pull those out. And then underneath, you'll see those brackets right there, there, there. Those may or may not be screwed in depending on who's been messing with your car. <coughs> Mine are screwed in, so I unscrewed those. Then you got four bolts that go around the shift plate cover. Uh, they're hex head. Uh, right there, you see them? Those are easy to take out, just don't lose them. And what I wanted to get to is once you get all that stuff out, then you can take out the radio. So. I have a new radio that looks like an old radio factory style, uh, with Bluetooth and everything. Uh, it's not a bad radio. The Bluetooth <clears throat> is an extra um, purchase, but custom auto sound is where I got it from on eBay. And it's not the best radio. It's 300 watts. Uh, it sounds okay. Uh, it's got an iPod plug in too, so <clears throat> not bad for the money. Uh, the radio itself is like 100 bucks. And then the Bluetooth, if you want it, is another hundred bucks. <clears throat> Those, to get the plate off, they're screws, or nuts rather, right here. Uh, those are half inch. So you take two of these off to get the plate. Then you can just pull the plate off from the front. And there's two more that hold the radio in. Um, take those off again with a half inch. And the radio pulls right out from behind. Too easy. Okay, next thing is to take the rest of this dash part, uh, starting with the bezel. So you see right there, there's a screw hole. I don't have screws in them uh, because I've been waiting for a while to do this, and I'm just I've been lazy. So take those screws out, and this thing will slide out. <laughs> now, also these rings just pop off. You got to be careful not to break them because they're generally brittle because they're old. So pull your trim rings off for your gauges. Don't force them. Uh, okay, so they're off, they pop off pretty easily. The big ones are a little bit harder to get off. Again, just be careful. And I just got a gauge I stuck in this AC vent for my air fuel. Okay, then lower your steering wheel. There's bolts underneath here. Actually, those, that one right there, that nut. And there's another one on the other side. Uh, you can lower that if you want to make sure you don't scratch up your steering column like I did. I'm going to repaint this. This car used to be a different color. Um, <clears throat> but then this thing just pulls out. See? And then you got to finagle it a little bit. To make sure it doesn't scratch anything up. And I need both hands. And five seconds later, it's out. Let's set that back there. Okay, and your cluster is easy. So this is just in here sitting. This is what I'm replacing. Um, I left this generally in one piece so I can put it back together. I have all the vents. I actually have a whole nother one of these um, so I can put my AC back together. And then this now is just a matter of taking all these bolts out that hold it in. This one actually doesn't have the bolts in it on the top. But you pull these bolts out. This one, you see, I didn't leave the bolts in again. I've been planning on doing this for a while. Pull your gauges out. <clears throat> Be careful with them. And you just unplug the clip or the wires on the back side. The only one that's really kind of a pain is the speedometer. There's a clip on the back of there that you might have to use vice grips. I'll try and get a camera angle on it while I do it. In my car, these are seven millimeter. And bring them out. Okay, so that guy's out. Right there. Already ripped off all the hoses. Next, rest the gauges. Okay, so this guy. Not a lot of play, not a lot of slack, so just reach back there and unplug your gauges. Now, there you go. See, there's a plug. There's this one. Just pull straight off the back right there. 
And then you also got, that's a dash light. I put LEDs in there a while ago. It's really worth it. And one more to pull off. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. With the uh, Speedo. Reach in there. Okay. You can see this tang right here. This thing's got a tang on it. You can't really see. It's on the back of the gauge. You just gotta push the tang and pull this thing straight up that way. I can't hold a camera while I do it, but I'll try and get you a better angle. Okay, here we go. I'm underneath the dash now, looking up from the steering wheel. You can see, there's the tang. There. I'm pushing on it. There you go. See, there it is. That's a pain in the ass, so it's good to see somebody do it. And then, unscrewed this thing. I've got some other plugs to pull out. Make sure you grab the uh, little buttons, little tangs on those plastic plugs you gotta push into. See, to get them out so you don't break them. Those are old, brittle plastic. And you also want to be careful with this circuit board. This is a new one I bought on eBay. But you run the risk of screwing it up when you're pulling this thing out, so be careful. Don't, uh, don't get it caught and bend it and break any of the circuits. Okay, just for some clarity, um, to make sure I can get the cluster out without screwing up my steering column paint any more than I already did, I took those nuts off. I told you I was talking about There they are down there. They're three quarters, or I'm sorry, they're 11 sixteenths. Oh, they're the, that's where they went, right there. So take them off and this thing just comes right on down. Okay, dashboard's out. <clears throat> it was relatively easy. Uh, lowered the steering column with those two nuts I showed you earlier. You can see it right there, the two of those. And then up here, you'll see where all the bolts were from the dash. It's really easy, so I took off the pillars. There's a screw right in there. Take those screws out, pull off the pillar, do the same thing on the other side. Um, then you just go up underneath and all the bolts that are here, you just take the nuts off and lift up the dash. It's actually not that hard. Now the next step's going to be removing the defroster vents and then the heater control box. Okay, so I've got the um, defroster vent out. You can see it's sitting right there. Best way to do this is there's a nut right here, rather a bolt, you just pull that out, too easy. And then here, there's gonna be a, a lock nut, one of these guys, on the edge of a pin. Just take a screwdriver and you're gonna pry that off. Now it's going to be sitting in there like that. Just stick your screwdriver up in there and pull it out, bend it, um, break it. You don't need to worry about it. You're not going to use it again. There's another one over here. Once you get those two pins out with those two uh, little connectors um, on there, the whole thing will just be able to fall down. You press down on it to get it out of the uh, bracket onside the dashboard. Pull it down, pull it out, throw it on the ground. Next is going to be pulling this out. There's a bolt up there, another one underneath here. Oh, there it is. Um, and then that guy with that grounding strap. Uh, that's a little hidden gem. On the other side of the firewall, there's a half inch nut that's on a stud there. Take that half inch off. I'll show you. Get out of here. Lots of little hidden goodies. That guy, take him off and you should be able to pull the box out. Okay, so got it out. See it sitting over there. Issue is this bolt decided to break off of the box, which is fine. I'm either gonna hook some vice grips up to this side and then continue unscrewing the other side on the nut or just chop it off with a Dremel. Um, <clears throat> so be prepared for that. As you can see, 
looking pretty empty in here now. Uh, all these vacuum lines you can just get rid of. Not going to be needing those anymore since the vintage air is all electric. Sweet. Okay, I put up a fight, but I got it out. It ended up actually just breaking when I was wrenching on it with a pair of ice grips and a wrench. So <clears throat> now it's out. I would recommend use this as an opportunity to take some zip ties and clean up all of this. So my Trans Am's got speakers up here. Um, haven't had them in there for a long time. Here's the speaker wire. So I'm probably gonna change these ends and zip tie all this rat's nest up uh, into some more manageable uh, harnesses, if you will. Especially since the wire loom brackets are breaking from years worth of neglect so okay just some housekeeping uh, I'm plugging these things and untangling all the wires as much as I can and then bundling them together and things you know, so they make sense so like this long long strand that was a bunch of wires to separate this actually goes my air fuel gauge um, wrapping them in tape as you can see so they're easier to manage and easier to route and keep track of. So unplugging as much as I can so I can have bundles. Uh, for instance, this one, I untangled it out of all this other stuff and then just plug it back in, keep track of what you're doing. But you will thank me later if you do this. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull out some this wires I don't need to. anymore. And this is the ECM the wire for the, ECU. For the um, 1980 version of the Trans Am. Going to pull that out since I don't need it. I also pulled out the stock AC harness, and I'm going to clean it up because you'll see over here none of it plugs into anything anymore because I upgraded everything. So pull out any unnecessary wires. You can pull out your vacuum lines for sure that go to the AC, and you can pull out your AC wiring harness. This is an old engine control harness. I don't need anymore. I don't have any video of me installing the condenser. It's pretty straightforward, a little bit of a pain to do. <clears throat> With the new condenser in, follow directions is pretty easy to follow, hard to do. Really the hard part is getting the old bolts out. That one, that one, and then the same two on the other side, one down there, then the other one right there. You can see it, uh, they're half inch. Uh, having a friend help you is pretty uh, good idea. And then, you know, obviously, to get to this, you got to take out the radiator. There's mine. There's the old condenser. Uh, it's relatively straightforward. Uh, you're going to want to take the brackets off. So you can see the passenger side bracket still on. Took the driver's side one off uh, while it was still in the car. Um, left that one on. Driver's side one is still there underneath the car. But take that off and unbolt it and it'll fall out. And then you unbolt the bracket on the other side. And then you can get the, the condenser out. And then the new condenser goes in relatively easily. You're going to end up putting this bracket on with the condenser out of the car. Putting the dryer in there as well. And then mounting that bracket into the car first. And then finagling it on. It's, it's not too difficult. And then there's... You can see those nuts, they'll tighten those nuts um, on the other side with it in the car right there. Um, so follow directions, it's relatively straightforward. Just uh, careful with your knuckles when you're wrenching around in there. I took the opportunity to clean up my water pump while I had this thing apart. Uh, so I did, you can see it <clears throat> cleaned it up because it was bad. Uh, now everything's nice and shiny. And then here, you're going to put that grommet in there and then push the tube through it. Um, don't worry about it fitting. It'll stretch and your tube can fit through. You see it's right there. And then I'm going to take that cap off, the dryer, hook it up. Make sure you lube it and put your O-ring on. Something to look out for is when you're using the O-rings, oh, i got the directions over here. 
pay attention to the size of the O-ring. So it says use a number six O-ring. Look at the directions. And make sure you do it correctly. So size them up. There, this is actual size. And then you can see that's the O-ring needs to fit next to that little lip. It is not a big O-ring that goes around inside the entire female nut. The O-ring just clips there and fits there. So don't put too big of an O-ring in there. Um, I've seen people do that and you'll ruin the O-ring and you won't get a seal. So something to look out for. So that's how far I've gotten so far, putting this bracket on now. And then I'm gonna put on the two little uh, clamps that hold this onto that like so. And then I'll put the other tube on like that. Oh, there we go, like that. It'll fit similarly. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, <clears throat> it's kind of a pain in the butt to put the trinary or the binary switch on. Remember, if you have electric fans, you're going to need a trinary switch instead of a binary switch. There it is. So after you connect the lines and you get the clamps on, then you have to reach in there with the 9 16 take this guy off, this little plug and install the binary switch. And <clears throat> you're gonna need a big old wrench to do it. Uh, something like, what does that look like? Like a one inch, a little bit bigger, like one and a, one and a sixteenth maybe. So be prepared, hard to reach in there. I basically did it just an angle like this. Going back and forth. A 32nd of a turn at a time. Thanks, Vintage Air. <clears throat> Putting the radiator back in. Uh, important note. I feel like it's important enough to tell you. When you're putting in your lines again, your transmission lines, use a damn line wrench. Don't use a regular wrench. Okay? Half inch for mine. Use a regular wrench, you're going to ruin it. So use a line wrench. All right, here's another pro tip. Uh, when you put your radiator in, the little rubber feet, these bad boys, see how they got a groove in them? And you see how they got a big fat butt on them? Use them. Okay. Little metal piece, curved. Looks quite a bit lot like the little foot. All right, and see that lip on the radiator? That's what that little groove is for in the rubber thing, in the rubber foot. So put it in there, in that bracket, and then another one on the other side. See it? Put it in the bracket, or else you're gonna have your, your uh, radiator <clears throat> vibrating all over the place and bouncing up and down, getting cracked. Look at that beautiful condenser, brand new. Look at it. <clears throat> There's the dryer installed. The lines, beautiful. Okay, man, that's pretty. Time for another pro tip. Okay, so this crap, all right, gook. See, it's all over the place. <clears throat> and you see that beautiful paint? You don't want to scratch it, right? So don't use a screwdriver. <clears throat> Use something plastic. This is a divider out of one of those, you know, knick-knack boxes, organizer things. It's one of those. And it takes it right off really well. And guess what it doesn't do? Scratch or paint. Okay, so a little catching up to do. Got the unit installed. I think I already showed you I put in the vents for the defroster. Nothing significant to report on how difficult that was. You can see, <clears throat> got the hoses ran, got the drain hose coming out right there by the header. But as I was going through, 
I got a very significant coolant leak because my gasket broke on the timing cover. So, timing cover's off. Getting ready to redo the gasket. And while I'm in there, I might as well put in my Pete Jackson gear drive. So, more to follow. Got the timing gear mostly on. It will sit flush with the other gear on the cam. Okay, so still working. Uh, got the timing cover back on. Cleaned it up a little bit. Drained my coolant twice and put it back in because my timing cover was leaking pretty bad. So I put a little extra RTV on there. You can see it didn't put too much on there, or I did put too much on there. And I'll take it off. Um, I'll get in there and clean it up with a razor blade. <clears throat> but I ran it. It is not leaking anymore. The problem is, as it was leaking through here, it got down to the oil pan. So now I'm positive I have oil in my coolant. Pulled the dipstick out and found oil in the coolant. So now I've got to drain the oil. So it is, it's almost 1 a.m. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I got everything else put back on. I had all that stuff off earlier. I also identified a power steering leak when I was crawling around. So I'm gonna replace that power steering pump because there's a crack in the reservoir. Uh, also, as I was running it, my hose was leaking here. This is three quarter inch hose, at least according to the hose. It says three quarter on it uh, somewhere. But it's slightly too big, so I had to double up the clamps there to keep the, the um, coolant from leaking out. And you can see all over my floor, there's coolant leaking out from there. Same thing happened in here, which you can't see, with the evaporator and the blower. <coughs> But long story short, behind there on the fittings, since that hose is slightly too big, it was leaking. Got on my carpet a little bit. I caught it in time before it made a big mess with my assorted pans and buckets. Um, gone through about, I don't know, 15 quarts of coolant. They're all over there right now in those cans. So I would advise you guys to check once you get everything connected you can see i got my ac lines connected now uh, i'm going to clean these up and cut them if i have to cut them or not the ac lines but the coolant lines but you can see uh you should run this and make sure you're not leaking before you get your car put all the way back together especially before you put the dash back in now you can see my dash is still out uh, makes it way easier to get that thing in this is when you want to install the wiring. I did it out of order. Don't make my mistake. I'm going to jump to the wiring now. And now it's going to figure out the wiring. So the heater control valve. <clears throat> that guy is not on the big wiring harness. That guy is on this little wiring harness that comes out of the miscellaneous parts. So now, time to figure this out. <clears throat> So once I figure it out, I'll let you guys know what it looks like. So you can figure it out easier than I'm figuring it out. Okay. <clears throat> it's time for that. Got everything else done. And one last note. Once you get your belts on, you should just run it and test it and make sure everything's fine. <clears throat> Here 
to the right goes inside the firewall. So all that purpley, tan, yellow, all that goes inside the firewall. This is where the firewall cuts it. All this stuff will be in the engine bay. So you got to run this stuff, all this through your grommet you put in and that you sealed, your little uh, plate. Which means you need to <clears throat> take this and unscrew this nut and get those wires off. And then route all this stuff through and then reconnect it. Because obviously this won't fit through. Also, <clears throat> this stuff all needs to go inside the firewall too. So this will run inside the firewall. So I just have this wire coming out. Because if you look at the wiring diagram, this plug plugs into that white plug inside the firewall. <clears throat> the sheet's a little easier to understand. Here's the firewall. There's the white plug running through the firewall. There's the latch. And then you have that little ground that you'll ground anywhere you can. It really doesn't matter as long as it's a chassis ground. So you mount this inside, you mount it outside. I'm going to mount it inside. So I just have um, of one black harness coming out. So, got it separated. Little washer, little nut. <clears throat> you can see that, so this blue wire and these two white and these uh, red terminals, that's what I'm gonna run through the firewall from the inside. Leaving all of that <clears throat> inside the firewall. And I wish I'd have wired it before I put everything all back together <clears throat> but I didn't so it's gonna take me some time I'm not looking forward to it so <clears throat> don't put your entire badash back together like I did before you run all the wiring um, you're probably gonna want to do it <clears throat> about the time you get the hoses connected to the evaporator So you can see, I got almost everything put back together. I've got the control panel installed. Um, and by the time you get the blower and the evaporator put in, and before you put everything else, you might want to run all your wiring. It's what I should have done. So I'll probably end up taking this apart again, <clears throat> but I won't take the entire dash out. Okay, so this thing, sorry that my lights um so this thing's got to be level um you can see my hose down there i gotta rerun it through the firewall because i had to pull it out but if you have an iphone go to the compass and then swipe to the right and you have a level so if you don't have a level already i mean i've got one but then i just for fun double checked it with my iphone and my iphone is actually easier to use and I'm within one degree of level on this thing. Forward, back, it's it's zero degrees. It's exactly level. But uh, left and right, it's one degree off, which I think is close enough. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, running these hoses is a pain in the ass. <clears throat> because after you run them and you install your kick plate and then you run your hoses through and you pull up all the slack um, you then got to hang it on that bolt with a friend or a wife or a spouse or something turning it on the other side so you can line it up and get it caught in there then after you do that you're gonna drill holes for these bolts right there you gotta make sure those are level or actually you make sure this thing is level you level that first you hang that bolt like I told you, and you keep it kind of loose. Then you level this thing, and while you're holding it level, mark where you're going to drill that hole for those two bolts. And those are 3 8 Put it in with your handy impact if you got one. Um, then you're set. And then you can see these things are still hung. This hose is going to go right there. That hose for the defrost is going to go on the other side right there. 
Um, and that's as far as I've gotten uh, because I got sidetracked with this coolant leak. Clean up my time and cover. Oh, and I replaced the harmonic balancer while I was in there. So there's a new harmonic balancer on it, nice, nice and pretty. Uh, so if you're like me, you're going to use this to do all your other projects and catch up on everything. So I don't think there's anything else I can catch up on. I also got my gear drive installed. It actually sounds pretty good. I got the quiet timing gear set uh, because I don't want this thing to sound necessarily like it has a blower. And I still want to be able to hear other engine problems, and I don't want to wind drowning it out. Next step is going to be going to the auto parts store tomorrow and getting a belt for the AC to fit on that third pulley groove on the crankshaft and then here looks like it, they sent me a compressor I ordered the one groove compressor they gave me two though so that'll be all right <clears throat> so I'll use this groove to go to that groove to run my compressor as you can see the lines are installed but you can see the, these are the charging lines high pressure and low pressure side one thing I did notice is I've got a couple extra holes in my firewall that they did not provide brackets or block plates for so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to block those off so I don't get a bunch of fumes in there this actually isn't gonna be that bad luckily you can see through there you know there's the hole it's easy to it's easy to reach through the through the uh, glove box hole because I didn't put the glove box in yet so I just run it right through it comes out the other side Easy. Um, just the wiring part's gonna be a little bit of a pain, but <clears throat> there's enough wires down there. You saw me earlier when I was cleaning everything up. I have plenty of ignition sources. So there it is. Run through. I'll end up sealing that. Some silicone. And my terminals. I'm about to reconnect. This is going to go to my binary switch. I actually am going to have a trinary switch since I have electric fans. <clears throat> if you have a regular fan, you'll do a binary switch, which comes with the kit. <clears throat> okay, so I have a trinary switch because I have electric fans. I got this. I ordered this when I ordered the, the kit. Oh, upside down. There you go. So... There's only two blue wires, and as you can see, uh, this is the trinary switch. Here's the trinary switch on the diagram. The blue wire from the compressor relay. So here's the compressor relay. It's inside. I'll show it to you. Blue wire. Compressor relay blue wire is going to go to the black and green wire on the trinary switch not the blue wire which goes to ground which doesn't make sense but that's how they have it and then <clears throat> the other blue wire is going to go around to the rest of your stuff so you got a black green and a blue black green and a blue <clears throat> so what that looks like is here's the blue I showed you earlier so it comes all the way through, through your firewall. It comes out here to the compressor relay. Alright, so that's what I'm going to hook the trinary switch up to initially. Here's the other wires I was talking about. The ground wire, this white one. Again, I don't know why it's not black. But here's that little piece that comes off of the heater valve and I put the plug in here and I'm going through the old hole for the big metal tube out of the old evaporator this is just temporary for now until I figure out exactly how I want to route these wires after I get the engine wiring done and I trim the hoses <clears throat> because until I get this working right I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim the hoses replace them as necessary Make sure this is the right size hose because I have the wrong size hose on it. I have a slightly larger hose, which is why there's two hose clamps on it because I'm dumb. <clears throat> when I was installing this, I put the wrong size hose in. 
Uh, got the right size hose here. So anyway, I'm going to fix all this before I do any permanent wiring mounting. But you can see where I'm going through right there right now. <clears throat> so remember, that blue wire is what you're looking for. You have the trinary switch. <clears throat> okay, so i got to run this to my fan relay eventually. So my fans, my fan relay to the compressor. And here you go, the blue one goes in my fan relay. So <clears throat> here's my fan relay. I unmounted everything. I had it all hidden underneath the uh, inside where the headlights are down here running around. Here's my fuse. Got to have that. Um, <clears throat> Make sure your battery's disconnected, by the way. Here's my fan relay. So now, <clears throat> I'm gonna figure out this wiring and let you know how it looks. So the next step for me is hooking my trinary switch to the compressor clutch. It says black wire, black green coming from the switch. So this side, there's my ground wire, and there's my blue wire to the AC compressor relay. Um, <clears throat> but the compressor clutch is black wire. You see that end on it. But the thing they give you to hook up to the compressor clutch is a blue wire. So you can see the end. This, this part goes to the compressor clutch, and this is how you hook up to your trinary switch or hook up to whatever you're hooking up to, uh, your binary switch perhaps. <clears throat> so I'm going to run a wire around the, the firewall into my loom over there towards the battery because I'm going to keep all my clutches or my relays and fuses and stuff over there. So <clears throat> I'll show you that in a sec, but I'm going to run it around and keep it out of the way of the belts and off the radiator. So plugged in, blue wire just to get a general idea of the length. Run it all the way around. Here's the new wire I've created. Put a little spade connector on it to connect to the one I got from Vintage Air. And then I still haven't cut it yet, but this is gonna connect to my switch. And I'm just gonna connect it with a wire nut uh, to test it. Okay, so now you'll see my last wire is this blue one on my trinary switch. And I've got to run it to 86 on my fan relay. So how do you find 86? Now you look on there maybe and it says, oh, there's 86. But what one is that? Take this thing off. And then you might find what I found, if I can focus. Got the numbers printed so 86 is that guy right there right there that one so plug it in hook it back up i know it's that one on the left side that is my wire that i need to connect it to this brown one and this brown one is not the one that connects to my temperature up here. That brown one, I don't remember where it goes. Actually, I've got it connected to this red one. So I think this is ignition power. Yeah, it's ignition power. Actually, my actual relay has what it is switched on or uh, stamped on there. Yeah, you can see right there. Switched, switched power. So, <clears throat> in short, your other blue wire goes to switched power. So if you can decipher this mess, I've got my compressor relay hooked up to the black and green wire with a wire nut. Uh, wait, this one. Then I have my other blue connected to ground. So there it is on my negative 
power cable, I just went straight there because I'm going to keep all this stuff close to the battery, my trinary switch. So you see this is there connected to the blue and connected to the appropriate blue. You see how I've got them separated. Then my other blue green connected to the AC compressor clutch. That's this one with the big blue wire nut on it. And you can see this is the one that goes all the way around to my compressor clutch. And then finally the last one going to my fan relay number 86. So my fan relay came out of A6, which is switched power. I use a quick splice. Normally you don't like doing that for temporary things, but it'll work. But now it's all hooked up for testing. <coughs> Note, do not engage your power to your, or kick on your compressor clutch until you have evacuated the system and filled it. Because the <coughs> R134 has lubricant in it, so you don't want to turn your compressor until you've lubricated it. It says that somewhere in the directions, but reminder. And I'll show you how to do all that in a minute. So I just noticed something. <clears throat> 86 I have connected to switched power. But here it has 85 connected to switched power. So I'm assuming it's much like my, my trinary switch where as long as each side's connected to the right thing, you're okay, but what I noticed is my 85 is switched power, not my 86. Because my 85 goes to, as you saw earlier, my 86 goes to switch power, and it's even printed on my wire. But here, 85 goes to switch power. So, I'm assuming this is backwards. So it's either backwards on my, they, they put this thing together wrong, with the wrong wires, or they printed this wrong. I'm gonna assume that when they assembled this, they put it together wrong and they just plugged the wires in backwards. So I'm going to follow this thing, meaning my other side of my trinary switch that's connected to my AC compressor clutch also needs to be connected to the part of my fan relay that goes to the temperature switch. That is my other wire, this black one. So I'm glad I caught it. This black one runs around, shoots over here by my alternator, comes out, and it goes to my <clears throat> temperature for my engine temperature. So, I'm going to unhook this and connect it to this wire, just to make sure I don't screw anything up. So, when all else fails, make sure you're connected to the right stuff. Okay, so it's switched. You can see the little teeth mark on that one from where it was. Uh, to get these off, by the way, if you want to remove a quick splice without ruining it for the wire. Just take a screwdriver. I'm going to stick it under the clip. And twist it off like that. See if I can do it. And then you stick the screwdriver in there. Welcome back. You just stick the screwdriver in there, twist it, pry it apart. You can usually get out the little wire first. Because you'll see on a quick splice, one wire can go all the way through like this one. The other one has a plastic uh, little you know, wall in there, plastic little stopper. Um, and then you can stick your screwdriver in there and press that metal uh, tooth out uh, without damaging your wire too much other than how it gets damaged when you splice it the first time. You know, wrap that up, just a little piece of electrical tape, make sure it doesn't touch, it'll be okay, I think. Uh, but that's how you do that. <coughs> and now you can see that I have one side of my switch connected to the fan relay and the temperature engine switch. And the uh, compressor clutch. So here's my temperature engine switch right here, that black wire that runs around to the temperature engine switch. 
And then my other one that runs to the AC compressor clutch, which is the blue wire nut, remember? This long black wire that goes all the way around on that blue one. The spade connector to my clutch over there. Then the other side <coughs> is ground. You can see it going down to my battery cable down there. And then to the compressor relay. Notice that blue wire going all the way around into the firewall of the compressor relay. Then before I go any farther and before I forget, I wrapped all this back up because this is connected to hot and you don't want that arcing out while it's flopping around. So I'm gonna I've got a box I'm gonna put over this a little plastic cover. Um, don't know where it is right now, so I'm gonna find it, but until then, get a wrap it. Now I'm gonna plug in my wiring harnesses. So you got a control wiring harness from your control unit. And I just got it running through here. And then I got the other end of my uh, engine bay wiring harness. And that's the rear side with the heater hoses, which is away from me. So that means the control wiring harness is gonna be on my right side as I'm looking at it. Back up in here. And then the engine one is gonna be on the other side. Oh, crap, here they are, right here. These two ones right here. Let's just plug those guys in. And there you have it, plugged in. So now I'm just gonna keep working my way down from top to bottom to make sure I get everything and double check everything. <clears throat> Wiring harnesses check, compressor relay check. Now it's time to start connecting the violet to my ignition. Okay, <clears throat> so got my voltmeter, ground, and then I have all of, you can see all these little labels on all my wires. I like to keep all my wires labeled to make things like this easier. Um, and this one I know is ignition, but just so you can double check, you know, you find a wire as you can see, my, I hooked my battery cable back up, making sure nothing is going to spark or arc, or nothing's touching what it shouldn't. Um, no hot wires. You can see I'm at zero. Turn on the ignition. Make sure I have a good connection here. And you see me jump right up to 12, exactly. So this is my ignition wire I'm going to use. And I also know for a fact that I've routed this particular ignition wire to, a f to the fuse block and it's fused. Okay, so my ignition wire is connected. That actually goes up to my defroster, not my power window. Uh, but I'm, I don't use my rear defroster because I don't ever have this car out in the winter, <clears throat> so I'm not worried about it. Uh, I'm actually gonna disconnect power to it. <clears throat> uh, the tan wire is for your um, dash backlight. I don't have the lit up version, so I'm not gonna use it. Uh, gray is for programming. I don't have that, so I'm not going to use it. Red and green is connected there. Uh, now I just got to put in the chassis ground, this white one back here. So I'm going to ground that guy to the chassis. So I'm just going to find a bolt on the firewall actually and to connect that. <clears throat> and then the next step is going to be getting my binary switch connected. And then everything else just hooks up to the battery and it's it. This is actually not that difficult. Assy ground. Metal. Things metal, metal, screw. And that wire runs all the way around to this white one. One I was saying, I left the end on just so I can show you it's the same wire. So I'm gonna chop that end off. And there you go, chassis ground. Now I just gotta hook up the battery cables down here and make sure my binary switch is properly hooked up. Okay, so all, <clears throat> all the wires are connected. I replaced my trinary switch. I uh, put the trinary switch in there, replace the binary switch, and 
all the wires. I just made them a little longer so they'll reach because I wasn't thinking. Everything's hooked up, grounded, and hooked up to the battery. This is okay, so now that everything's connected, I'm ready to test it. I already ran it, the blower works, and it does blow out warm air. So my coolant is circulating and heating up. The defroster will work now. Now I am evacuating the system. Run the pump from the auto parts store, run the manifold gauge set. Uh, you can see I'm pulling good vacuum. I've uh, already <coughs> ran this for 30 minutes or so, then I shut these off um, and checked to make sure it was holding vacuum. And it is, it's holding vacuum at about 25. So, it's going to keep evacuating it for about 45 more minutes. Um, I'm just getting hooked up to my high and low pressure sides. Uh, once that's done running, I will fill it with refrigerant and that should be good. While I'm doing that, while I'm waiting for that to run for 45 minutes, I'm going to replace the plug on my power windows. You can see it's been gone for a while. Uh, and I had it ghetto rigged to use my windows with the switch. Now I'm going to place a plug off of the wiring harness from an old Trans Am I used to have and now I'll have a good switch. All right getting ready to charge the AC I'm almost done got three more minutes uh, as you can see use R134 1.8 pounds 28.8 ounces and it comes with oil in it so a lot of new compressors may or may not come with oil in them they need oil so it's called PAG oil <clears throat> As you can see you don't need to put oil in there so you're good to go so I am about to charge this bad boy up hurry up hurry up you see I got pretty good pressure and again I'm just gonna test this I'm gonna charge it test it make sure it's blown cold and then after all that I'm gonna clean up all of this Maybe cut the hoses, which will mean I'll have to attach more coolant. Uh, route the wires the way I want them. Clean up all the connections. Probably put in a distribution block, a ground distribution block. Um, also got a new um, battery terminal for my ground. Got a silver one for positive, gold one for negative. And as you can see while we're waiting, plug on there but I'll just show you the blower working there you go. I ran it earlier and it does blow hot when the car is hot all right it's time so the first thing you're gonna do close off your valves Turn off the compressor. Make sure I'm still holding good vacuum. I am. I'm actually holding more than I was before. Then we get ready to add the refrigerant. Okay, so got my refrigerant. Uh, I turned off, like I said, the valves. Turn these valve. I'm gonna leave this valve on. I don't know. I'll turn this valve off. Close these valves too. And I took off the low pressure down there and I hooked up my AC can. So you can follow directions on the can, but essentially it tells you to turn on your AC. You know, I, I click connected the compressor wire. Turn on your AC, start running the car with the AC on. So, cold. Turn on my fan. And dash, start her up. And then we'll start charging. This isn't going to start tightening the compressor until there's enough pressure in the system. And you can see there's no pressure. That was good for it. It should start tightening. It seems like I got enough pressure in the low pressure side. So it's getting hard. There it goes. Now this has 20 ounces. 
whole can in there, but I got 28 ounces left, or 8 ounces left that is another can. Alright, so that other can is empty, and now I'm going to put in most of this can. I'm going to follow the directions on here, it tells you the pressures to look at, and then I'll weigh it to make sure I have the right weights. But you can see it tells you the pressures for this one. success so I measured the can with my postal scale and it is oh, it's gone it is uh, right on the money actually I was lucky um, all this is work I'm blowing cold air now all I'm gonna do I'm done with the installation more or less I'm gonna clean up some wires finish putting in my panels under the dash zip tie up all the wires so they're not in the way, and then I'll show you how it all ends up. I'm also going to put in these new transmission lines. I told you I'd get some. I did. They came in. Put those transmission lines in. <clears throat> May end up changing my water or uh, power steering pump because I ordered a chrome one. It should be in today. Um, put in my electric fans again. Make sure all my relays are working. Clean up all this wire, and I'll show you the finished product. If anything interesting pops up, I'll let you know. Okay, so. Just to be safe, I checked the pressure one more time when I was running it, and my high side got up to 300. And that's not ridiculous, but it's only about 65 degrees right now. As you can see here, the high side should only be up to 270. And that's, I'm guessing they're gonna call that when it's hot, you know, like 90 degrees outside. So, I think, it's because I didn't have my fans in and I wasn't pulling air through because uh, it looked right at first and then it got higher and higher so I turned it off and let the engine cool down and I'm going to try it again with my fans running and see what it looks like just to make sure before I take these tools back degrees on my AC vent. My car's not overheating. Everything seems to be good enough for right now. I just gotta figure out why my high side pressure is a little low. I might not have charged it. Okay, so my thoughts are um, my center duct temperature should be in between 36 and 46 and I'm at 50. My high side's a little low, and my low side is just about right. So I'm pretty sure I'm just low on charge. I need to put a little more charge in. Well, I ran it, and I checked. And just a reminder, I'm not using this low pressure gauge. I'm only using the high pressure gauge, and I'm using low pressure on the can. Um, it's up high because the compressor's not running. When the compressor clicks on, it drops down low, like it's supposed to, to about 15. My high side uh, jumps up real high to 260, 250, and then my fans kick on, which let me know that everything's working right. And I guess I'm just pulling a lot of a lot of air through my fans because this thing never gets up above 150 now. Seems to hover around 150 now that the engine's up to operating temperature, and my fans will constantly run. Um, 
it's just the high side staying a little low. I know I have enough R134 in there. You hear the fans on. Running. The blower's running. Turn it off. So anyway, this thing's good to go. It's blowing cold and still about 48 degrees. I may end up uh, if I'm not happy, I may have take it in an AC shop and have them double check it, but I'm sure I got no leaks. I'm sure I'm full of Freon, or 134, and I'm sure I'm getting cold enough air. So, now it's time to put it back together. Okay, reinstalling the stereo. See, I got my vent in over there. Stereo is kind of a pain. You have to wiggle it through. The best method I found was putting it through the glove box before you put the glove box together. And as you can see, um, once you get through the holes, if you have a stock dash like I do, these little nuts go on there and hold it in place. Uh, I'm gonna actually put some washers on there. too can do this. <laughs>